Hiya. Okay, so I just thought I should probably document what other symptoms I have. I have problems with uh, bladder. Woohoo! Um, I also have problems with uh, sensation head to toe, uh, a lot of tingling, a lot of numbness. Um, I also have, uh, I think it's all pretty much due to my spasticity because first time I took baclofen, my god, it was like everything was just gone. The MS hug was completely gone. I was able to move my legs easily. Um, yeah, it was a dream for a couple of weeks. And during those couple of weeks, I found I could actually feel when it was wearing off and I'd take another one. I was told that I could take up to 120 milligrams a day. I wasn't told that you have to be careful about how you increase the dose or decrease the dose. Um, neurologists do not tell us enough about these drugs that they like to dole out. Um, Sorry, when it goes dark like that, it's because my husband set his screen to like go to sleep if things aren't moving around fast enough. Um, so I've moved the mouse. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, so the spasticity is really bad. The baclofen helped, but then it stopped helping. I don't know if my body got used to it. I still take it because it gives me just the minutest bit of relief. Um, but it's so minimal, it's crazy. I tried taking Botox, which was at first I couldn't tell much of a difference, but then when it wore off, it was like, holy beep, this has been doing something because I'm feeling the difference when it's starting to wear off. The, the spasticity was just like, oh my God, I didn't realize it was that bad. Um, unfortunately, my husband's working contract right now, so no health insurance and that stuff is expensive. So um, I think I can get it through the drug system somehow, but I have to get into the right clinic to do that so that it's covered by through the hospital. Anyway, I'll figure that out if I need to after the liberation. Hopefully I won't need that. Um, so I still take the baclofen. Uh, I have intention tremor, which is really a pain in the butt. Uh, that started after I gave birth to my son, uh, before it wasn't there, after it was. I remember trying to use the computer, the keyboard, learning how to pretty much type again. Um, great therapy for the fingers, uh, the keyboard. Um, a couple of times it's brought back the use. Um, and uh, my arms are super strong now because how the legs don't work, I have to manage them with my hands, but they're still very fatigued. Um, if they weren't as strong as they were, I don't know uh, uh, how they'd be. Um, I have problems with my sight, but uh, it's not as bad as it used to be. I'm not legally blind anymore. I see almost completely normally, but as I get fatigued, things become more hazy. Um, I have problems with my speech every now and again. I used to get verbal dyslexia, I called it. Um, I don't get that as often. I do get the cog fog. I get horrible migraines, and I've gotten those since I was 14 years old. I used to wear sunglasses to class and I'd get made fun of and it was the light sensitivity. I can't deal with the light and um, especially fluorescent lights. I, if I go to a hospital, I've got those things on my head. It doesn't matter if it's midnight and it's dark outside, you're going to see those with me because I'm worried about the fluorescence starting a migraine. Um, I think that has to do with this as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh. Uh, about two years ago, I started choking! Woohoo! Okay, if you choke, go to an ear, nose, throat specialist, an ENT, and have them check you for acid reflux. Uh, it is due to the MS. Unfortunately, when I first was diagnosed, I was like, oh good, it's not MS. But I went to a gastric um, doctor, and he explained how, yes, it has to do with spasticity down in the esophagus. So, um, but the medications for acid reflux, uh, the good ones, like, um, oh, I think one of them's called Tetsa, T-E-T-S-A, and Prevacid, P-R-E-V-A-C-I-D, those work really well. Um, yeah, so if you have the choking problem, if you find that every once in a while it's going down the wrong way, get it checked out. Uh, I didn't know I had acid reflux because I didn't have that burning feeling. I didn't know from acid reflux. That's what I thought you'd have to have if you had that, but no. So if you're having the problem with choking, go to an ENT. They'll put down a little nose or a little tube through your nose. Um, it's painless. It might make you like your, tear, your eyes water a little bit, but it's painless. 
and they can see right down into your throat and uh, if they see the acid, you've got the acid reflux, you take the medication and no more choking. Promise. Um, what else? Tingling, lots of tingling. I associate that with the spasticity and numbness. Um, I mentioned the bladder. My problems with bladder are um, retention and also release. So um, I tried to catheter for a while, but uh, that caused more UTIs. And uh, now I get them quite regularly. And with the cathetering, that makes it worse. And I found after I cathetered after a while, my body got used to the catheter. And it was just as bad as not catheting. Uh, for some reason, my body was still pushing out more urine after I cathetered and it just, it was a nightmare. So um, I'm a fan of Tenna. Yes, uh, not the granny panty ones. They do make ones that fit a little snugger so you can't really tell I'm wearing them. And yes, I am proud to say I wear them because at least it gets me out and it gets me out without a catheter um, because those don't work for me. Um, I'm sure it's kind of shocking to some people that I'm as open about those things, but I figure um, unless we're open about it and we put a face on these things, people aren't going to respect it. Just like we take chemotherapy for MS, and yes, the same chemotherapy as people <laughs> who uh, have cancer and that sort of thing. Uh, there are those of us who lose our hair. There are those of us who end up getting the byproducts from the chemotherapy, which can be another type of cancer. Um, I did the chemotherapy twice and then Tisabri was available to me because my husband had the proper insurance at the time. Uh, unfortunately, Tisabri and me parted ways um, because I was over the two year mark and I started to get some rather bad infections. I got a really bad sinus infection followed by a chest lung infection and that was some pretty scary stuff. And I had felt so bad for six months I thought it was just even though I was on the Tisabri, I was on a steady decline with the MS, and I just thought, okay, well, that's just what I have to deal with. But when I came off the Tisabri, I got energy back, I felt better, and I don't mean energy back like a normal person, I mean energy that you have as an MS person. I had even worse energy than the MS person has. Um, so I stopped the Tisabri a few months ago. I have no plans on going back on it. Uh, after the two year marks, uh, the two year mark is up, your uh, possibility of getting the PML actually rises. So instead of that one in 1,000, uh, my doctor, who is the head of Tisabri uh, Studies in Canada, Dr. Paul O'Connor, told me my risk went up to eight, one in 800. And um, it's already not a nice risk, but that's even worse, and I wasn't getting the benefits out of it anymore. I was declining. So um, I had, at that time when we met, said that I would continue with it, but that was before the infections, and uh, the infections pretty much put the stopper on. So I think I've gone on like, oh my goodness, it's over eight minutes already, I'm sorry. I hope it's been entertaining at least. Um, yeah, so those are my symptoms right now. I can't think of anything else. I'm affected head to toe. I'm just lucky that I'm able to talk this clearly and see as well as I do right now, and um, use the upper part of my body with these pipes. Yes, very proud of my pipes. Um, yeah, so this time it's audios for the day. Uh, we'll see you post-liberation.